So if you're not familiar with No Longer Human, I tend to think of it as the literary equivalent of something like Death Consciousness, or maybe The Downward Spiral by Nine Inch Nails would be a better comparison. It's just a book that is bleak and unrelenting, and it's a book about depression and about suicide and about abuse and about addiction and all these nasty things. And the more I think about The Downward Spiral comparison, the more sense to me it makes, you know, because both books basically cover the same exact topics. Though I will say that The Downward Spiral, I think, focuses a lot on anger, whereas I don't feel too much of that from No Longer Human. I feel sadness, but I feel a lot of numbness from the book. And I think there's just a lot of despair. I don't think there's much hope in the book. So No Longer Human was written by Osamu Dazai, who was a Japanese writer. The book came out in 1948, I believe. So it came out after World War II and is largely based off of Osamu Dazai's own personal experiences from what I gather. I just read The Bell Jar not too long ago, and I think that The Bell Jar No Longer Human have more than a passing similarity. Both books are basically about their authors' lives, you know, and both of them are fiction technically, but there's more than a grain of reality to them. There are certainly instances that you can point to No Longer Human, and you know, they line up perfectly with his real life experience. Much like Sylvia Plath, you should know before reading this that Osomu Dazai killed himself, and this book is seen as his suicide note, essentially. Again, this isn't a happy book, and I can't stress that enough. You shouldn't expect any kind of joy when going into this book. Like The Bell Jar, this book is written in the first person, and it's about a guy named Yozo who narrates the story, and it's told through a series of journals that he's left behind. Basically, Yozo doesn't feel like he belongs in society, he doesn't feel like a human being, and he doesn't understand what it means to be human exactly. And so it's very interesting to read this book because of that. It's interesting to get into Yozo's mind and to try to see things from his point of view because he doesn't get what it means to be human. You know, he, he's confused, right? And he doesn't understand society and he feels scared and alone all the time. If I had to sum up how he feels, I would say that he feels like an outsider in his own skin. He just feels uncomfortable in every way possible. And so there's this idea seen throughout the book that he puts on a mask repeatedly, not a physical mask, but rather he puts on a kind of persona, right? And so when he's younger, he is a fool, he's a jester. And he makes people laugh and he makes them smile and he is silly and he uses that as a mask to hide his, his sadness and his disconnectedness from everyone else. And as he gets older, that sense of disconnectedness kind of manifests in different ways. As a way to numb it, he becomes involved with drugs and alcohol, and you know, he sleeps around a ton, he sleeps with prostitutes, and it's all just kind of trying to cover up these horrible negative feelings. And that's one thing that I think is really interesting is, a lot of the reason why Yozo turned out the way he did is because of his upbringing, right? The first section of the book is about his childhood, and What's so interesting to me about it is that there are a lot of things he discusses in the rest of the book where he's completely transparent about how he feels and about what he did and why he did it. But some of the childhood section is more obscured. There are things that are only hinted at that aren't explicitly stated. And I think that making sense of that helps you to understand the rest of the book and understand why he is the way he is. So this is one of those books that's not about a good person, right? Yozo is not someone you should look up to. He's not a hero character, but he is someone that I think you're meant to empathize with. I think that you're meant to try to understand him and to see why he turned out the way he did. And I think that you're meant to come to understand his feelings, essentially. I think that's really kind of the point of the book is it's not to make you feel sad or to make you feel depressed or make you feel spiteful. I think it's just meant to make you empathize. But Yozo is not a good person. He does things where he hurts people, he abandons people, and he doesn't talk well about the people who try to care for him. But he's honest, and so because of that, I think that that's what makes the book interesting. I think that's what makes the book work, is just the fact that he's not trying to hide his feelings. He hides his feelings from people, yes, from other people, but in his journals that you're reading, he writes everything down. And I think it's interesting reading this book with the idea in mind that he's not a completely reliable narrator. So I think repeatedly throughout the book, he sees himself as the lowest of the low, basically. He sees himself as human scum. And I don't think he is. I don't think that's a fair judgment of his character. You know, is he a good person? Not really, I wouldn't say so but I don't think that he's completely unredeemable. And I think there's a, a tenderness to his character that peaks throughout times, but retreats pretty soon after because it's hurt. You know, this book is a character study more than anything else. It's not really plot driven. You know, there isn't really any action to it. It's just all about Yozo, the character. And by extension of that, it's about Dazai himself, just because of the fact that there are things in this book that are based off of Dazai's own life. So this is actually my third time going through the story. I read the manga by Junji Ito, and then I've read this book before. And so 
This is my third view of the story. And I have experienced something that I didn't feel my first couple times, which was frustration. This is a book that's similar to Stoner by John Williams, which is another one of my favorite books. I think it's freaking phenomenal. But with both books, I'm kind of frustrated by the main characters just because of the fact that too often they don't speak up for themselves. And so that's why it's frustrating to me is because these people are put into these situations that could have been avoided if they had only said something. If they'd only made their feelings known, then they wouldn't be in these bad situations. So I think Yozo has a lot of horrible thoughts, and I think that because they're honest, they resonate with people. Even if you don't completely agree, which I don't agree with anything he says 100%, but even if you don't completely agree, or don't agree at all, I think that you are expected to understand why he feels that way. And so by extension of that, you're expected to understand why he acts the way he does, or rather why he doesn't act. Which, of course, inaction is still an action. And so there is a part of me that's frustrated by the fact that, you know, he doesn't speak up. He doesn't tell people what he wants. And so because of that, whenever he doesn't get what he wants, he's hurt. And so I am frustrated by that as a reader and as someone who wants things to go well for him, even though I know they don't. But also, I get it. That's my big takeaway from this book is I don't think that you're supposed to love him. I think you're supposed to try to understand him. And it's weird because when things have been bad in my life and I've read this book, you know, I understand the character much more easily than I do now because I'm in a pretty okay place. I uh, don't want to jinx it, but I don't connect with the character as much as I once did on a, you know, hurt emotional level, which is good. I was thinking about this earlier, but this is one of those books that's kind of like the Joker movie, right? Where it features this character who's bad and who you're supposed to empathize with but not admire and i could see someone taking this book and basically starting to admire yozo in the same way that they do patrick bateman and i think that with a lot of these literally me characters that you may have seen appear online i think that there is a degree of ironing to them you know i think that a lot of the time people post patrick bateman memes because they're funny not necessarily because they're like wow i really want to be the american psycho by the way what's your favorite part of american psycho my favorite part is the twist ending where it's revealed that there's not only an american psycho but a canadian psycho as well but going back to the idea of me being frustrated with yozo i think that even though a lot of his actions are frustrating i think that they're understandable, especially considering that he has this tendency to push good people away and to go back to people who treat him poorly and are not good for him. Like there are certain people in his life, like Hariki, I think is his name, Yozo's friend, who just has way too big of an influence on Yozo's life. But also I think there's truth to that depiction of Yozo's relationships just in the sense that usually in real life, if someone is mistreated, then when they do end up being treated well, they are suspicious of it. And they are like, why am I being treated nicely? You know, and they are more comfortable in bad situations just because of that. And it's horrible and it's a shame and it, it's real. That's, that's why the book is written the way it is, I think. Because again, Yozo sees himself as the scum of the earth. So of course he's not gonna go to people who make him feel good. You know, if someone told him, Yozo, you're actually great, you're the best. You wouldn't believe it. Early on, especially, there's a lot of talk about how Yozo wants to be an artist, right? He wants to be a great painter. But as the book progresses, what actually happens is he becomes like a kid's magazine comic artist, and then he starts doing like lewd drawings for magazines. And so he's not really using his talents in the way that he would like. And so it's just one of those things where he doesn't have anything good in his life, and anything that is good gets taken from him. And it's not fair to say that, you know, he's only a victim, right? Because he perpetrates some bad things on people. There's one thing that I think is interesting with how the book depicts women, because Yozo is depicted as a ladies' man of sorts, right? Like he's really miserable, but the girls like him. And so he just goes through all these careless and meaningless relationships, basically, that don't really go anywhere. And a lot of them are just kind of meaningless. But the ones that do mean something, he usually screws up. But again, I think we're just meant to empathize. So I really like this book. I think it's really great. I know it's a super popular novel in Japan, and it should be. It should be a super popular novel everywhere. So even though I have a lot of good things to say about it, this book isn't for everyone. Quite frankly, there are just some people who will not enjoy this. So I'd read this book before, of course, so I knew what I was getting into, but I was interested in seeing other people's thoughts. So I looked at some of the reviews, some of the negative reviews specifically for this book. And one thing that seemed consistent was that a lot of people just didn't like Yozo. A lot of people just didn't like him. And again, 
I think you're just supposed to empathize with him. I don't think you're supposed to like him. And I don't think a character has to be likable in order to make the story good. But also, a lot of people just didn't like being in Yozo's head. Because, again, you are exposed to his thoughts. You are exposed to his honest, genuine thoughts and feelings. And they're not pretty. But I think it contributes to this feeling that if you don't like being in his head for, you know, a few hours as you're reading this book, imagine how much he must hate being in his own head 24-7. So I think this book is overwhelmingly depressing. Even the happy things, even the good things that happen to him are just kind of there to make his bad times feel that much worse. And I think that a lot of it is perspective. I think that a lot of it is just because of the fact that he has you know, such a pessimistic, nihilistic attitude towards things. Even the best things he would see as bad just because of that attitude. But at the same time, his life freaking sucks, dude. There's, there's no way around it. It's like, I don't think that he's wrong for thinking that his life where he's living in poverty is a bad thing because it is. So I think that's what I have to say about the book for now. Um, thank you for watching. I hope that if you read the book, you enjoy it. And uh, I hope that if you're a fan of the book already, you enjoyed my thoughts on it, I guess. I thought about starting just a normal freaking book reviews channel where I just sit in front of a camera and talk, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, that's gonna be freaking boring. Like, I don't I don't want to watch someone just sit in a chair and talk about crap. Um, so here we are. So, more stuff coming soon, I guess. Uh, I got like a billion different ideas, so we'll see what becomes of it. So, thank you for watching and have a nice night.